everyone. I'm uh, on my way to Headwaters, Florida, and going to try to go find some uh, bed and fish. So the, the temperature has been uh, cold over the last three to four days here in Florida. And again, uh, we don't see 30 to 20 degree weather, and that's what we saw. We saw weather in the 20s. So the water temperature had dropped down to the 50s. Uh, if you watched my video from yesterday, you saw I was out on the St. John's River and the temperature was around 54 to 56. Some of the back pockets, I found some water that was in the 60 degrees. Uh, that is uh, prime time. You start seeing the water get to the 60 degree mark. That's when you start seeing the males. They'll start moving up on the flats, making those beds, and the females aren't too far behind. So they're gonna be any deep water around those flats. That's what you wanna target. You wanna target that deeper water. Uh, they're usually sitting there feeding up, getting ready to move up into the uh, into those beds. So I'm gonna try that right now. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try to find some uh, deep holes that are off these uh, ledges or off this uh, structure. Looking, I'm gonna be off the hydrilla. I'll be going live so you'll be able to see what I'm doing, how I'm doing it, the baits I'm using, the tactics I'm using. Uh, hopefully, we can find some of these uh, big females that are moving up on the beds. It's probably gonna be a later in the day. Uh, bite as far as beds. I think as the heat, uh, as it warms up and as the sun gets up over top, you start seeing these females move up. I might see some bucks that are up there already uh, starting to roam around. And again, just depends on uh, the water temperature when I get down there. Uh, one thing that a lot of people don't pay attention to is they, they put their boat in the water and they see that the water temperature is 55 degrees, 56 degrees. Uh, just because the water temperature is 55, 56 degrees where you're putting the boat in doesn't mean there isn't somewhere in the lake. Usually the north side of the lake will heat up uh, faster than everywhere else on the lake. But there may be a spot on that lake, you just got to find it, that's in the 60s. And again, you got to think too, the bass are spawning in that shallower water. So you want to go target that shallow water, that one foot to two foot range will warm up a lot faster than where you're putting the boat in, which is probably going to be five, six, seven, eight feet, depending on uh, what lake you're on. And again, deep is relative uh, to Florida, so you got to spend time in the water. You got to do your uh, research. You got to, you got to move around the lake. You got to find those fish. That's what I'm going to do. Again, I only have one day to fish headwaters, so I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to be covering some water. We're doing some power fishing, and I'm going to be uh, covering some water until I find what I'm looking for. And then you're going to see me uh, hunker down and really target those areas and try to pick it apart and catch those fish. Um, I believe the fish are going to be active. I don't think I'm going to be working too slow today. Again, it depends on that water temperature. But you're going to see me working uh, probably some square bills. I'll be working uh, chatterbait for sure. Uh, worms. You're going to see me uh, uh, dragging worms. I'll be punching through the thick mats, the hydrilla. So we'll be punching today. A lot of flipping. I'll be flipping the reeds. Bass will uh, spawn in the reed heads. So you see me get the reed heads today. You're gonna see me uh, pretty much trying all kinds of different vegetation to figure them out. That's that's usually how I uh, I pre-fish or even tournament sometimes. Sometimes the fish aren't where you saw them, you know, the day or two before. So you gotta go find them, and that's what you do. You search. They didn't go far. If you watched uh, Kevin Van Dam's videos on the fishing triangle, that's a good one to watch. There's a couple other videos talking about, you know, the fish don't move far from where they're at. So if they're not on the beds or they, you saw them on the beds and they moved off the beds, uh, they didn't go far. They probably went to that deeper water. Um, spawn usually takes, you know, two to three hours uh, at the most. And again, you gotta, you gotta be alert and, and watch what those fish are doing. Uh, are they locked on the bed? Do you see the male and the female? Uh, on the bed together. That means they're locked on. Or you're just seeing the buck. You're seeing the initial, the buck's making the bed, the females haven't moved up yet. Uh, or are you seeing the female move up on the bed? Uh, you go in there and spook her, she takes off real quick. She's not locked in that bed yet. She has nothing keeping her on that bed. So she's, uh, if you just put your troll motor down, or put your uh, power poles down, and just sit there, uh, more than likely she's gonna come back and you get an opportunity to catch that fish. So uh, you want to be stealthy, you want to be quiet. You're going to see I'm going to turn all my electronics off once I get into those bedding areas. Uh, I'm going to sneak up in there on those fish. I'm not going to go in there with my troll motor on 10 and uh, blow out the area, spook out the area. I'm going to be fan casting. 
uh, you're just going to cover a lot of water, but I'm going to be covering it smartly. I'm not going to go in there and, you know, uh, rush in right on top of the beds and start start flipping all around the area. I'm going to work my way in. So I'm a fan cast, a long cast. Uh, I think the longer casts are more productive. Again, you're, uh, you don't want to spook those fish. Uh, headwaters is, I would say, it is a little bit pressured. Again, this is the holiday period. I think, um, I think a lot of people probably haven't been out here due to the cold weather. I think this is uh, probably going to be a really good day. I think it's going to get better as the weekend rolls in. So if you are heading down here to Headwaters, uh, I think I think this weekend is going to be on fire because uh, it's supposed to be in the 80s. And if you uh, one thing you will look at whenever you're uh, bed fishing or targeting those spawning bass, you will look at the night temperatures. What is the temperatures at on the night? So you're seeing the, you know the water temperature uh, is probably going to be in the 60, low 60s, uh, but you're seeing the night temperatures uh, over the next four to five days, it's going to be in the 65, that's going to be the lows for uh, the night temperature, so that water's going to warm up, and then you're going to have 80s during the day, so the water will warm up and it'll stay warm, so that water could bump up by Monday uh, for the holiday, you you might see uh, the water temperatures uh, creep up near the 70s, again, we'll know here shortly, I'm about... 35, 40 minutes away from the ramp. So uh, I'll put in and I'll know right away what I'm gonna do. Uh, should have a light wind today, not a lot of wind. Uh, seeing bluebird skies, there's a couple of clouds. Uh, there might be some rolling this afternoon. We might see some clouds roll in. Uh, that can help you. But again, um, when that sun gets up, I'll have better visibility. Uh, one thing that uh, I didn't mention in my video yesterday was uh, make sure you have a good pair of glasses. So I use the, uh, the Costas, I have the, uh, the this bronze, green bronze lens. I seem to see more fish with these. I've tried uh, multiple different colors and I, I feel these are the most productive, especially here in this clear water in Florida. Um, so again, uh, up to you which ones you want to try out, but this is definitely worth the money. Uh, that is something you want to spend a little extra money on. Uh, because it does make a big difference. I've had my co-anglers in the back of the boat, and I said, man, look at that bass right there. And they go, I don't see it. And they have, they have glasses on. And I said, are those polarizers? And yeah. And, you know, they're wearing $20, $25 glasses. And they're not able to see the structure and see the different uh, fish that I'm able to see uh, with these little more expensive glasses. I got these on sale for like 189 bucks. Uh, but they, they're definitely, uh, I think there's a 520, that's what they're called. Again, um, I'll put the I'll put the actual description. I'll put in the description which one I'm using. But, but yeah, you definitely want to have a good pair of glasses. Um, a lot of people say that you know you want to wear camouflage, and I've I've called I've been wearing bright colors. Like again, I'm wearing blue today. Uh, I've wore bright colors before, and I've caught fish on the beds. I think it's all about positioning your boat. What you don't want to do is cast a shadow. So if I see that, um, and I, oh, I forgot to mention hard bottoms. So that's something else we're going to be targeting today. I'm looking for hard bottoms. Uh, whenever you see uh, dollar weeds, that's a hard bottom. Uh, we call them spearheads here. If I see the spearheads, uh, usually around reeds. If I see the, uh, the buggy whips, the reeds, some of those are sometimes in that uh, that hard bottom. But that's where the fish wants, want to uh, bed. So you'll see me stick my rod in the water, and I'm testing the bottom. That's what I'm doing. Um, also, in your graphs, you'll be able to see that uh, bright uh, yellow return, especially on your side scan. If you had the low rants uh, side scan, you'll see that bright yellow return. Uh, that yellow return means you have a hard bottom. And uh, if you watch my other videos on uh, how to find the uh, shell bars, that's one thing I look for too, is that that uh, bright yellow return on your side scan. So I'll be looking for that today. And uh, I'll have my 360 going uh, while I'm in that deeper water, just kind of a search mode. Uh, but once I find what I'm looking for, I'm gonna turn all that stuff off. I, I do believe that fish can hear that, especially in more pressure lakes, like uh, Okeechobee. I got a tournament coming up at Okeechobee. Um, I won't even turn my electronics on. I don't need them. I'll have my navigation on. I'll have one graph on that whole tournament. And that's just to get me to where I'm going. Um, and again, I'm not, I've, I've gone to that spot so many times. I don't really need my grass, but I always like to have it up there just in case. Uh, so I will have my low rants on. And then once I get to where I'm going, you'll see me put it in standby mode. So, uh, electronics make a big deal. Troll motor on 10 make a big deal. You definitely want to go in there. I'm going to be, again, it's all about uh, finesse. You want to be uh, 
uh, as stealthy as possible moving in there. A lot of people use a push pole. I did not bring a push pole this time. Uh, I don't feel like I need push pole for what I'm doing. Uh, maybe in Okeechobee, y'all might have my push pole on board. Uh, and again, you want to you want to uh, you want to cover water, cover a lot of water. And I'm gonna start on the north end of the lake. So where I'm gonna I'm gonna put in at the boat ramp. If you've never been to headwaters before, there's a lot of uh, videos out there. A lot of guides have videos on headwaters. Um, you want to look at those and, and try to figure out how to navigate the lake and where the actual ditches are, the deeper water. Um, you can run into a shallow spot. There's a couple of uh, danger areas. Uh, definitely know where the flagpole's at. That's uh, your reference point to where you can cut across the lake. You can almost see it just about everywhere you're at in the lake. So that's a good reference point so you don't lose your bearing. Also watch the videos on the uh, floating islands. That is a thing, uh, especially on a windy day. So if there's going to be a very windy condition out here, um, I am going to mind my surroundings. Keep keep looking around. Make sure that you uh, aren't getting blocked into the area you're fishing. Because sometimes what will happen is you'll have one way into this little area you're fishing and an island will literally blow right on that one cut and you're stuck. You can't get out. There's been people that have been uh, stuck out there and had to have uh, the, uh, the rescue team come out and rescue them. Um, especially if you're in a kayak, be careful in kayaks because uh, uh, some of the islands you can move with your boat. Um, I've had to do that before. You can kind of push them, nudge them, and uh, almost tow them out of the way with your boat. Um, you can't do that in a kayak for obvious reasons. So if you are a kayaker, uh, be careful. Also, if you're going out here on this lake, make sure you're telling people where you're going to go. So uh, I'm going to text a couple of buddies, let them know where I'm at. Also, uh, tell my wife what part of the lake I'm fishing at. That way, in case something does happen, and also some of the lake, there's not real good uh, cell phone reception. That's any lake. Whenever you go anywhere, um, just like if you're hunting in the woods, you want to let people know where you're going to be at um, in case something does happen. Because things do happen. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to start in the north end of the lake and uh, hopefully we can pick up some fish. So tune into my live here in a little bit. Um, I'll be going live on TikTok. Um, if you uh, don't have that, check that out. And then I'll be posting videos. I'll have three GoPros going, so I'll be posting my videos later. But um, again, thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe below. And I look forward to uh, seeing you on the water.